Good a- is it afternoon? Good afternoon. Uh, let me start by uh, selfishly just saying uh, uh, to my son Chance, who uh, had his first day of school today, uh, good luck in your first day of class, and uh, to all the kids that are starting this week. Uh, offensively, uh, we are making really, really good progress, and uh, I was really happy, especially today, with with kind of the stride that we made um, with our consistency, and that's really the battle at this time of year, uh, only five practices in. There aren't a whole lot of answers yet, um, but you can see things starting to kind of take shape a little bit as to you know, the positive direction that, that this group as a unit is going. Um, we continue to uh, coach and demand uh, their maximum effort at all times on the football field, and they, for the most part, they've given us that. I think it's, it's a learned skill. I don't think you inherently uh, are just always a football player that knows how to play hard or, or the type of grit that it takes to be successful at what you're doing. Uh, sometimes you have to be shown and taught and, and continue as a skill that gets developed over time. And we've gotten better and better at that, but we need to continue uh, to build that. And, and really it comes down to what we're trying to build with our unit as much as anything is the trust, love, and respect amongst each other in that locker room. And what that leads to is a cohesion that's unbreakable. And we want to be unbreakable as an offensive unit. Um, we want to be resilient uh, when, when times are tough, and we want to be resilient when times are good um, so that we can kind of next play mentality ourselves into being the type of offense that we want to be. So uh, there's positive things going on. Um, it's too early to give you a whole lot of answers, although I know you're going to ask for them, and that's your job, and that's cool. Uh, but the reality of the situation is, is things are trending really well. Uh, I'm proud of the effort that the kids are giving every day, and uh, we, I think we continue to make progress towards uh, getting ready for game one. So with that, I'll uh, answer your questions if I can. Hey, Coach Jacques Doucet, WAFB TV here in Baton Rouge. Um, what are your thoughts on throwing the ball to the running backs uh, as receivers, and, and what do you think of Amory and Kane and, and some of those guys? Yeah, I mean, they are going to be a, a, a big piece of what we do. Um, you know, tight ends, um, if we can make sure that we continue their development and the running backs in particular, are just going to make everybody around them better if they become a viable option in the passing game. Um, the more options that we have, the more threats that we have, um, and particularly with the wide receiver group that we have, I think we're all feeling pretty good about the depth that's in that room and, and how explosive those guys are. Uh, people are going to do things to try to take those guys out of the game. Uh, and when they do, that's going to lead some opportunities to some other guys, whether that be a back or a tight end or, or whoever that happens to be. And we got to get people ready to make those plays. Hi, Coach. Uh, Leah Van from The Advocate. Um, when you're looking at this quarterback competition, what criteria does that starting quarterback have to meet in your eyes? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, number one, we want someone who can run the system of offense that we're putting in. And, and it's an adjustable system. So it doesn't, and that doesn't mean, hey, well, I remember where coach came from, so that must mean this guy's got a leg up. It doesn't mean that. What, what it means more is what's in place for our offensive unit with the skilled players that we have and who we have offensively playing to the strengths of that unit. So whoever really commands that the best, and, and really who kind of takes ownership of the offense. We, we're, we're looking for those guys to compete with each other, of course. Uh, but we're also looking for those guys to kind of somebody step out in front. Somebody, somebody take the reins of this thing and really kind of be that guy that everybody looks to um, that upholds the standard of playing quarterback at, at LSU. And uh, so those things in particular, yeah, of course, we don't want somebody who throws interceptions or fumbles the ball around or doesn't know how to check protections. But more than anything, I think uh, the strength of the unit a lot of times, and especially we're a, a very quarterback-driven system, uh, that guy's got to have command of what we're doing out there. Brody Miller with The Athletic. Just to bounce off that, I guess, you know, what is your kind of – do you have a, a main no-no with quarterbacks or your main kind of thing that, that's an issue for you when you're evaluating them? Turnovers. Got to take care of the ball. I and mean, it starts there, right? And, and we all – you know, this is – you know, I'm not saying anything that everybody in this room doesn't already know, but uh, the most valuable asset you have offensively is the possession of the ball. 
uh, and you can't give those away. You, you, you got to be steadfast and make sure that, that that doesn't happen. So that's number one for sure. Uh, Coach Michael Cowell from WBRZ here in Baton Rouge. Uh, the offensive line, I guess, give me your assessment of where it's at. Do you feel like now you have some quality depth and you're comfortable with who you have running with the ones and twos? Uh, comfortable with who's running with the ones and twos. It, it, it's in flux. I guess, I guess it's, we're still, I think, in the um, identification phase of who are the best five guys actually going to be. Um, you know, right now there's some – there's some moving around, some moving parts here and there. We've got a couple guys, obviously, that we didn't have in the spring that need to be evaluated, um, whether that's a young guy or a veteran that's been here that's kind of back in the fray. Um, we've got to get a feel for how they fit with the other pieces of the puzzle up there. Um, who's the guards? Who's the tackles? Who's the center, quite frankly? And, and just dig through that some more. So. You know, five practices into it, I don't know that we're ready to kind of solidify everything we want to have solidified there, but within the next week or so, we'll be a lot closer. Uh, Coach, Peter Roderick is with um, the Revolu. What have you seen out of the tight ends so far in camp, and um, what kind of role do you see them playing in the offense this season? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's up to them. So, uh, you know, roles within offenses are earned by consistent play um, and playing to the standard that's necessary to be successful. So they have as much opportunity as any of the wide receivers or any of the running backs or anybody else to earn themselves a role within our offense. What I've seen from them is some pretty dramatic improvement from where we were in the spring. And I think it's, a, it's an ongoing process, of course. Uh, but we're not where we need to be. But I think there's, there's an opportunity there with a mix of personnel uh, to have – uh, some guys at that position in particular that can, can help boost this offense to another level. Coach, with you having a background coaching offensive line at times, does it speed up practice in terms of your productivity when you and Brad Davis are working together and talking things over and moving guys around? So yeah, forth? it's probably not a whole lot of fun being the offensive line coach when the offensive coordinator <laughs> used to coach the position. I mean, uh, no, Brad is, listen, Brad is fantastic. He certainly doesn't need any help from me. Um, but I think it, it does help the process of evaluation um, and making sure we got the right guys in the right spots um, just from years of doing it more than anything else. Hey, Coach Cookie Rife. Oh. Okay. <laughs> hey, Coach Cookie Rife from the Daily Advertiser. Um, I was just sort of curious with another offensive line question with some of those new guys that you mentioned that are coming in your, that you're trying to uh, bring into the fold. I'm sort of curious as to like, which ones have sort of stood out so far in the early going through five practices? Yeah, I mean, uh, Anthony Bradford's, you know, we didn't have him in the spring. He's a very good football player. Um, you know, Dellinger has got a chance to either be a starter or add depth. Um, and then, you know, Emory Jones is a, a young guy that has got a lot of the traits we're looking for in an offensive lineman. So we're trying to get him in a position, even though there's some good numbers there, to prove whether he's ready to do the job or not. And uh, so those are probably three of the guys. I mean, I, I don't think there's a guy that's been disappointing at all in that whole entire offensive line room as far as how they've grinded in their development from where they were in the spring. Um, but, you know, playing consistent, it's really, you know, the offensive line, we're a, they drive us, right? They're, they're, if, we ain't, if we don't have that right, the rest of the pieces have trouble doing their job. So. That's primary focus number one. Coach, uh, Tim Buckley with Tiger Rag. Um, with the running backs, back to the running backs, with Noah Kane in particular, how long should it take a guy who doesn't have the benefit of the spring to pick up a new system, and how is he progressing with that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it depends on the individual player. You know, Noah's a very intelligent football player. He's played a lot of football, obviously played on a big stage. Um, so I think he's going to adapt to our offensive scheme very well. I do think this. I think our offensive scheme fits him really well. I think he's comfortable with the things we do in the run game and with pass protection. So I love the progress that he's made. He's, he's, he's done a really nice job for just being out there for doing it for five days. So very positive stuff with him. Hey, Coach, uh, Glenn West with Go247. Just um, is there a point this fall where you guys would ideally like this quarterback thing to kind of get settled and just kind of what this? 
Okay. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yes, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, there comes a, a a line of demarcation of you know we we've got to get ready to to win game one, and and who gives us the best opportunity to do that? We're not, you know, we're not as you know anywhere close to that yet. But you know, that those decisions will be made by Coach Kelly, obviously, when that when the cutoff happens, and and hopefully. Uh, it's an easy decision. Maybe somebody actually really separated themselves enough where it's so obvious that the decision happens sooner. Um, maybe there's two guys that are just battling each other, and it's awesome. You know what I mean? Maybe there's three. I, you know, the more the merrier at times, but we also got to get ready to play the season and, and, and get ready to win football games. Hey, Coach Josh Siddeley with uh, One Team One Pod. With this younger O-line, how much do you think a mobile quarterback is necessary, and how much do you change your play calling between quarterbacks? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how much the play calling in particular would change. Maybe some of the options off the plays would change is from a play calling standpoint. Um, I think mobility is a key anytime at the quarterback position, especially when you're playing against some of the dynamic athletes that there are up front in SEC defenses. So... Uh, that's always, I think, a good thing to have, but I don't think it's necessarily the defining thing that's going to make the decision. Mike Wilson, Alexander from The Advocate. When it comes to Jaden Daniels specifically, Brian Kelly said kind of the end of the spring that y'all had adjusted his footwork uh, since coming from Arizona State. How much of a change was that for him, and is it something that he seems more comfortable with now? Well, I don't think it's finished yet. You know what I mean? I mean, like you, it says, you know, the old saying is it takes, what, 10,000 reps to master a skill. Uh, you know, we, we've been dinking with his footwork a little bit here through the spring and then through fall camp in the summer. And I doubt if he's probably got 10,000 reps at it yet. So, I mean, it's an ongoing process. I think what we're trying to, to garner from getting his lower body right is really the consistency necessary to throw the ball in, in, a little bit more accurately. And Coach Kelly and Coach Sloan uh, are all over that. So that's kind of their department. Hey, Mike, Scott Rabelais, also from The Advocate. Uh, a veteran sports writer asking a veteran coach, you've done this for a long time. How, how, how much do you have to try to adapt every, every year uh, to the, the new trends in the game? And how much do you try to hold on to those basic principles that you have felt that are probably all important throughout your career? Yeah, I, I think you always have uh, a set of kind of core beliefs of what you really are going to hang your hat on and then – I think a lot of the things that kind of complement your core beliefs are things that you're studying all the time, whether that's uh, NFL tape or whether that's other college programs that run similar offenses as you. Um, I don't really care where the idea comes from. If it's going to benefit our football team and make our offense a little more dynamic, um, we're going to borrow it. <laughs> yes. Hi, Coach. Um, you said this in the spring that the offense is flexible for all the different types of quarterbacks. Um, what makes this offense so easy to adjust for all the different styles of quarterbacks that you have in that room right now? I, I think that at its core, it's a quarterback driven offense, which means they're all learning how to drive the offense, whether that, and I think when, when people think of, okay, how much, how adaptable is the offense? Well, they look back at maybe what we did a little bit at Cincinnati where we were a little bit more of a read zone team and did some things like that. And people may not believe that all four of the quarterbacks that are in battling it out right now have the ability to do that. So how, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. When, when really what I mean by that as much as anything is that if read zone didn't happen to be a part of what we were doing, it won't greatly alter the fact that the offense is going to be driven by the quarterback from whether the protection is set right, uh, whether the plays are adjusted at the line of scrimmage, how many audibles we use, and all those types of things. We have all that, all that kind of uh, as piece of our playbook that we can implement depending on who that guy ends up being. Uh, BK said that you would have some kind of involvement in the decision-making ultimately for who the quarterback is. And I was wondering, is that more of a, a personal comfort or a trust that whoever is out there is going to understand the playbook? What would be your weighing factor when making a decision as far as like a personal choice as far as who that might be? And then if I can sneak a second one in there, we haven't really talked about the receivers. Is that just the luxury of kind of the talent and kind of the known quantity that they yeah, are? Yeah, you guys are bored with the receivers. You don't want to talk about the receivers. Uh, no, I mean, 
Uh, whoever gives us the best chance, whoever I believe gives us the best chance to win a quarterback will be, get my vote uh, as the quarterback. Um, you know, receiver-wise, um, I think those guys are doing an incredible job. I, I, I think they continue to kind of refine the little things. Uh, I think we all know they run really fast and they catch really well, but uh, transitioning in and out of cuts and, and, and different aspects and kind of the inside uh, deal of, of playing the wide receiver position, uh, Coach Hankton, I believe, is really doing a great job with kind of bringing those guys to the next level with their overall game and not just being able to, you know what I mean, do the things that we know God gave them the ability to do. Uh, Coach Kelly said there wouldn't be any separation in the quarterback to maybe the seventh practice or something like that, which I guess might be Thursday or whatnot, because you were going to get into be third down. He put uh, a number on it. <laughs> something like that, <laughs> sixth or seventh practice. Um, is that because you're doing third down, you're, you're seeing who can make the clutch throws on a third and five, third and ten? I mean, it, it, are those the important things that will cause a separation? I mean, it'll help for sure. You know, I mean, it, it, and it's really, and, and listen, just so we're all kind of on the same page, this is a complete evaluation as we can make. This is, this is leadership. This is knowledge of the offense. This is uh, making the plays that are there to be made. This is making the clutch throw. This is, you know what I mean, protecting the football. It, it's kind of all encompassing. There's not going to be one thing that goes, okay, boom, it's over. That, that guy did this or did that. Um, that's going to make the final decision. It's going to be really a comprehensive approach to the evaluation. Appreciate it.